and the electronegativity pattern. Let's start with valence electrons. First of all, you should know that they are the electrons located in the highest energy level or in what's called the outermost energy level of an atom. And so here we have an example of nitrogen where it has two inner electrons and it has five outer electrons. Because these electrons are on the outermost energy level, it means they're exposed to other elements and atoms, and therefore those are the electrons that can either be gained, lost, or shared. And so nitrogen here has five valence electrons, and if we recall, if it were to gain three more electrons, then it would achieve a full octet. So the valence pattern on the periodic table are corresponding. As you have one valence electron in group one, this corresponds to this group on the periodic table, the alkali metals, where every element in that group has one valence. The elements in the second column all have two valence. We cannot tell number of valence of the transition metals because they are, it varies with them. So we kind of skip across to here where the boron family has three valence electrons, the carbon family has four, the nitrogen family five, oxygen family six, the halogens have seven, and the noble gases have eight, except for helium, of course, which only has two valence electrons, and so that's an exception. The atomic radius is the size of an atom. It's the distance from the nucleus to the boundary of the electron cloud. So, for example, if you look at this diagram over here, cesium has a much larger atomic radius than helium does, which is up here at the top. Cesium versus helium. So as you move down the group, notice that the atomic radius gets larger, and as you move to the left of the periodic table, the atomic radius gets larger. So it gets larger moving from, you know, left and then down a group, which makes this element right here should be francium, the largest element on the periodic table. So this has the largest radius on the periodic table. And as you get up here, this is where the smallest radius is going to be located. Located. Now let's see why this is the case. As you move down, why does the radius increase moving down a group? As we move down the group, you'll notice that what increases is the number of energy levels. Every time you go down to the next row, we add another energy level, which makes the atomic radius larger. So number of energy levels increases as we move down a group, which equals a larger atomic radius. Okay, what about horizontally? Why does the radius decrease when you move to the right in a period? Or why does it increase moving to the left? This has to do with the number of energy levels and the, a number of atomic, uh, the atomic number of the element. So first of all, notice that both of these have the same number of energy levels. They both have three energy levels. However, as you move from magnesium, which is located here on the periodic table, as you move from magnesium to chlorine, the atomic number goes up. And therefore, we have more protons in the nucleus as we move to the right. And even though our energy levels, because our energy levels stay the same, as we increase our nuclear charge, there's a stronger pull between the nucleus and the outer energy levels, causing the atom to be a bit smaller. Whereas on magnesium, there's less of a pull between the nucleus and the outer energy level, allowing the atom to be larger. Ionization energy is the energy required to remove a valence electron. And so if you will look at this diagram down here, this element has two valence electrons, one, two. And so typically it's going to want to lose the two valence. And so we want to get rid of these two electrons. And so when we remove those electrons, the energy needed is called the ionization energy. For some elements, it takes more energy to take their electron than for others. So the pattern is as you go up the periodic table and to the right, we have an increase in ionization energy, which means that helium is going to have the highest ionization energy. 
and over here, francium is going to have the lowest ionization energy. So let's see why. Why does the ionization energy decrease moving down a group? As we move down the group on the periodic table, again, we get to notice that our energy levels increase. Well, this has what's called, well, the electron, the valence electron is closer to the nucleus. And so because it's closer to the nucleus, there's a stronger nuclear pull, which makes it more difficult to remove the electron. So it requires more energy. Closer to nucleus requires more energy. Whereas when the electron is farther away from the nucleus, like in the example down lower, as you get further away from the nucleus, it requires less energy. So farther from nucleus, less energy required, requires less energy. And so as the energy levels increase, the amount of energy needed to remove the electron gets lesser and lesser. Why does ionization energy increase moving to the right in a period? As we move from left to right, it's a matter of the valence. These have one valence, these have two, and as we skip across, these have six, sorry, these have six, these have seven, and these have eight. So as we move from left to right, your valence pattern changes. And the elements that have one to two or three valence, they actually want to lose their electrons, which means it requires less energy in order to take the electrons, since they're actually trying to give them away in the first place. Whereas here, these are trying to gain more electrons. And so to take what they already have would require a lot of energy. Okay, electronegativity, the ability of an atom to attract electrons to itself. The pattern is as we go up the group, we increase, and as we go to the right of a group, it increases. Fluorine has the highest electronegativity. The noble gases have no electronegativity, none. And it's because they're not actually trying to attract electrons to themselves, they're already stable. And so they don't need an electronegativity. So these have no electronegativity. Let's find out why. Notice we have two elements here, carbon and carbon. They have an equal electronegativity. So that means they have an equal ability to attract electrons to themselves. And so that's why you'll notice that the cloud around them is equal in size. So we have an equal cloud around both carbons because they have an equal attraction to the electrons. Over here, you'll notice oxygen has a higher electronegativity versus hydrogen. And so because oxygen has a stronger ability to attract electrons, it has a larger portion of the electron cloud surrounding it, where hydrogen has a, less, a lower ability to attract electrons, and so it has a smaller electron cloud surrounding it. Why does electronegativity increase moving up the group? As we move up the group, we have what's called less shielding. So here you have more shielding, which decreases the ability for the nucleus to attract electrons to itself. Whereas as we move up the group, we have less shielding, which allows there to be a stronger, stronger nuclear pull in order to attract electrons to the atom. Horizontally, why does electronegativity increase moving to the right in a period? And as we move to left to right, it has a lot to do with valence as well. Here, they're trying to lose electrons, so not trying to attract any electrons to themselves. So they're gonna have a low electronegativity. Whereas here, groups six and seven are trying to gain, and so they're going to have a strong attraction for electrons. And finally, one more time.